I'll show you underneath now. Just pop the hood. See what it's like now under it for the final rub. I've got a little bit more to rub in a couple of areas. But yeah, you can see under the bonnet now, it just looks factory. And another thing too, guys, making sure it just fits like nice. Clothes is real nice too. That's important because once we put it all back together, there's no coming back. You get what you get sort of thing. So everything's got to fit now. And Dad's rubbing his side. He's starting to get around it as well. All right, so here we are. We're uh, on the second rub on the primer stages. And this this has now got to a stage where it's practically finished. It's final second rub. And we're ready for the, the final two to three prime coats. And then once we get that on, there'll be a quick 400 scuff over that. And this car should be really straight and ready to go after that. Okay guys, so what I'm doing is now, I've nearly got it lined up pretty good. Um, but the important part of it is, is making sure also the top of it just real perfect as well so when you're rubbing it all it's all going to fit so what i'm doing now is bring down the bonnet like a couple of mil because that's all it takes you there's literally a mil in it and um, that's what all i have to do is just move, move it that couple of mil so just loosen them off A little tiny bit. And that has already moved the mill. And then um, I'll lower it back down and see what we've got. It actually went a little bit too far. So I'll show you. So yeah, just it just dropped about a mil too much. So now I've got to do the opposite and bring it back, back up a little bit. All right, guys. So I finally got it after playing around. But you can see here with the ruler what I'm trying to do, and that's just to get that gap just trying to get the camera to work there we go yeah just trying to get those gaps right and the bonnet and the top of the guard to line up too so they're pretty good now and the other side just come around and have a look I think it's a little bit high yeah you can see yeah, it's a little bit high there, so I'll drop it down as well. Dad, what's yeah pretty close to it now yep um so that's got the final coat that's drying now we'll give it another couple of days the front's ready for the final rub um so this side now i've just started to give it the final rub as well um so basically a nice block back and yeah just this is real fussy this rub and then after that we're going to pull the doors off the doors are going to come off and then we're going to actually uh, sandblast all in behind the doors. So we'll show you when we get to that. 
But yeah, and then um, the bonnet's gonna come off and then we're gonna sandblast the engine bay as well. You run your hand across it as we always do. And we feel on a panel to see what's what. And um, this, this now has got to that point where you can't feel anything. And once you get to that stage, you know the job's well and truly on its way. And basically how it works in this trade, when you do that, and you put your hand across the panel, what you can feel is what you will see in the end result. So at this point, once you, you get to a thing where you can't feel anything, and you, as I say, you final prime that and rub it, that will come up absolutely immaculate finish on that car. All right, what's going on here, Dad? What's the uh, process now? What are you up to? Well, the final part now, I'm down to uh, get this one more, the final prime coat over this whole thing now. And um, as you can see, it's really crucial now with all the door gaps to get those really nice even gaps right up through it and that's why we spend the time in the really beginning of the builds to, um, to make sure everything fits like for instance with this car if you guys would have watched the build from day one you would have seen back where this guard and door gap was virtually non-existent there was only probably a millimetre gap there where now you've probably got a nice three four mil gap even from top to bottom and the the two the door gap in the center of the car there um, where the two doors meet you could shove your fingers right in it before it was that wide and now it's a nice even gap same as the back door gap and that's why it's really crucial from way back when we start these jobs but yeah i'm at the stage now final rub um, then i'll give it one possibly two prime coats to finish it i'll see how it, you know, the prime coat lays on this time and if I'm happy with it, I'll give it another one and that'll be it. And then I'll get a final rub over the whole side and then that's completely done and ready for colour. Morning guys. I'm so another day on the VH Commodore. But what I'm going to do is today is actually talk about why we get so fussy and why it takes so long to um, actually block the car straight. And what I'm actually doing is, like if you can use an orbital... Um, you see, you know, people can paint a car real fast if you want. You just get that rotor, it'll knock it all back, prime it, knock it back again with the rotor and paint it. But with this car, we don't want to do that because what happens is the end product, you'll get all these waves through the paint like so. But what we want is that really nice dead straight. So when, when you hear Pendle Peter say, oh, spray paint is, geez, that's a nice paint job. It's dead straight. That's the hard, this is the hard part. So. This is the part where when you start, we use blocks. When we finish, we use blocks. And we're trying to get the whole look pretty much back to factory when it's just dead straight, it takes time, and it's all about the finish with the block. Um, it takes a lot of time and effort and concentration. This part of it now is very important because you've got to keep the block dead straight. Every little bit of a rub's got to be perfect. You can't just hit and miss it, it's got to be all in line so it comes up perfectly but what we do then is we'll cross back over, rub it like a cross so once, once you go back over this way you can see it's actually it's cutting it like a knife evenly and then you come back again this way and what that does is, is actually cuts it all dead straight in this area and brings it out where it needs to be. But then what I'll do is, is wipe the whole side of the car down and I'll clean this side of the car and I'll make sure that it's uh, clean and then I'll run my eye down the side of it and I'll find those highs and lows and then that's how that's how I'll find the highs and I'll rub them down and then I'll find the lows and I'll avoid the lows and it's just basically time and yeah just knock that high primer off there just a little bit it's only a couple of microns um, in primer so you just want to knock that back a little tiny bit 
and that's all it's going to take and then I'll, I'll check it again and I'll run my eye down it. All right guys, so what I do is now, um, what I do is I run my eye and use the shadow. See there's a shadow, oh, I'll get it on the right angle. There's a shadow and when you go back and forth along the door, you can see the shadows move and that's what we're talking about with the straightness. If the shadows 100% like goes along straight, you know that that door's rub straight. It's a little bit hard to show with the camera. But yeah, we usually try to put a tree or something in the background and then we'll run our eye along the door and you'll see if it all moves and it's all ripply. And with that door, it's pretty straight now. I've got a little bit more, a little bit of a high, but I keep rubbing out of the primer. And then that door's complete. So that's how you see your highs and lows. Alrighty guys, that door's off. I'll put that pin back in as well, make sure you keep I'll keep the pins from where they come out of. What's going on around here? It's more rubbing. Still rubbing? Still rubbing. I've got my mask and I don't want to get COVID off the car. Okay guys, so today I've got the doors off, pulled them off yesterday. And the next step I'm going to take the door rubbers off. We don't need them on there anymore, just got to be very careful uh, taking them off. We don't want to tear the rubber or, or anything like that because they are an aftermarket rubber. And then I will pull the window tracks out, the door lock, and then, um, yeah, basically get ready to give a quick little sandblast around the outside. I've already pulled the rubber off this door. So you can see with the door rubbers where they push in, same as the Toyota Land Cruisers and stuff. It's so when you when you're pulling them back out, you got to be very careful. But yeah, though, I just like to get in under them like so and just just um just pull them down like like that carefully behind the rubber. Come on now. Uh, this is basically the final rub for this boot lid. You can see now it's got a nice shape to it. It's really come up very, very straight. Feels good. As we always do, you rub your hand across it. It's all about the feel. And um, the next thing you'll see it, I guess, is uh, when it's painted, this, this particular panel, and you'll just see the whole difference, how it's come along. But it's come up really nice. And that's been um, given a lot of... Uh, time to dry out so that should come up um, very very nice when that's painted and, and buffed all right guys so the door's all sandblasted we got rid of all that old paint and rust and paint build up 
So now we're back to the steel. Okay, so the doors have primer on them now. So, you can now see it comes up really nice while we sandblast. All in behind the areas, you've got no old paint in between at all, and everything's covered now with new primer. So, yeah, guys. So, next thing I will um, let them dry for probably three days, and then I'm gonna knock them back, um, give them a nice rub, and then they will be ready for paint. Here we are, we've done the final prime on the left hand side of the VH and the next thing we'll do with this, we'll take these two doors off, we'll sandblast the inside of the doors, clean them right up. But we had a lot of drama with this right hand, uh, sorry, left hand front door. What was happening, because it had been replaced and who knows in its life what's been done, it's obviously had a small accident I'd say down this side and when you shut the door before, this gap, there was virtually no gap before we got onto uh, the build of this car. And you had a massive one here at the back of the door, you could actually poke your fingers in. But now, as you can see, the gaps are nice and consistent. The, the doors fit on really well. And also, what was happening, where this door frame is sitting now, before it sat outside the pillar, it sat right out and it just would have been an absolute hideous fit and you know you're cruising along next thing all the rain and wind just blow in but now if you have a good look you can see it's a nice correct snug fit the way it goes right in around that drip mold and fits up against the the uh, center pillar along the bottom of the door now the body lines all line up everything and the fit and the fit and finish of it all and the way the door shuts perfectly now the gaps are good lines up good with the back door and right along and continuous right along the car and, and that's what you want to have at the finish you want it really nice once it's all painted you see some some of the old girls they're not so pretty the gaps are a bit odd and funny and especially when they you know they've been through with a, a bit of an accident here and there and back in the day they were just trying to chuck back together but this is what you get, you get this and then they come in for the rest though. But if you look down that car now, you get a good look and you can generally see how straight and in line everything is. And that's a prime finish. That's no body filler. Um, the days of lead wiping that we used to do all the time, it's gone now. To a degree, there's still a little bit of it around. And had this car really have needed it, if we didn't have spent the time to get it all straight and push the dents out of it and shrunk and filed, we would have leaded it here and there. It's got a little bit of the factory joint up here in the roof where the turret goes onto the uh, deporter panel. Um, but yeah, back in the day, we used to do the lead wipe the whole lot and it takes time. But in the end, no body filler and, and that, that paint job now will last for years to come.